Hello? Testing. Hmm. All right, guys. Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Testing. Testing. Two. Okay, restream is confusing than I thought. Every time I come in here, there's something new. Okay, I'm going to have to mute myself on my laptop. Hopefully that will solve it. Um, all right, guys, let's get back to it. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Just drop a one in the comments if you can hear me. I know this is really unprofessional at the moment, but I need to make sure that everyone can hear me first before I continue. Okay, cool. Andre says he can hear me. Uh, let's jump straight into it. There was reverb now. I don't think there's reverb anymore, right? If I'm not mistaken, it's all gone. Cool. All right, let's let's jump into it. All right, guys. So welcome, glorious, glorified community. Hope you guys have been doing well. Um, Today's session is very special because we're doing a holiday-themed design session. And of course, I think this is a relevant to any global, like uh, on a global level, every market resonates to a holiday theme. If you're running campaigns and during this period, you need to align your designs to make it have that look and feel. Uh, you know, specifically for those people who are celebrating Christmas, it's very important. And there's a lot of statistics that suggest that you know this is a brilliant time to run specific campaigns we've got we've run some content around that so go check out our social media on certain stats on how to run profitable campaigns during christmas you know you utilizing uh going getting these insights into these statistics will help you kind of frame your campaign but in this session of course i'm just going to be focusing purely on designing content that will have and adopt a holiday theme so we got some product submissions, um, and this is what we do every week. As you guys know, for those who don't know, every week we're going to be doing a, uh, a a live stream Wednesday at this time, 4 p.m. Uh, UK GMT. Now you are perfectly, and it's totally acceptable that any of you any of you guys can submit a product within that week up until we do the webinar. And on the day I'll be selecting a product, cherry picking a product, it'll be up to maximum two or three, three at most uh, that I will use in that live session uh, and do a design with. So today's session, let me go and share my screen. So share screen. All right, can you guys see my screen? Cool, yep, you can see my screen. It's trying to, okay, let's just delete that. 
relevant. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm just trying to work out how I can actually put up my. Um, there we go. Okay, so you can now see me in the corner. I believe you can see me in the corner. For those of you guys who are watching, let me know where you're streaming from. It'd be awesome to hear where everyone's tuning in from. Drop it in the comment section. Cool. All right. So let's jump into it. So I'm going to go into my Dropbox. Here's a couple of products that we've so cherry picked today for this session. They're food containers. I think they've got a very oriental slash um i would say southeast asian style i thought these are pretty cool the tin style looks pretty cool and i wanted to challenge myself in fact to you know if we can actually take these products and give it a christmas theme because there's a slight little clash of culture there where you know usually you'll see this around very south a southeast asian style decor environment uh, but in this case scenario, I want to try to really, really instill in it a very snowy, Christmassy feel. So let's see if we can do that. The second image I have, and I want to again challenge myself with, is this image by, I think I can't remember who who the submit, who the submitted it. I believe it's Jason, if I'm not mistaken, or Justin. Um, it's a coffee pack. Why have I picked this? Well, you can see the photography, and I actually told him this, is that it's not very high quality. It's It looks like it's quite mediocre in terms of quality, but sometimes you have to work with the content or the image that you have. You have no choice, you know? And I've, I have found myself in that position many times. And so if you have to make do with what you have, then challenge yourself to really, really create a powerful image around that. So those are what I'm gonna be doing today. With that, I'm gonna jump straight into a hero, hero image. And we'll go and filter into uh, niches. Uh, so for the niches, in terms of finding a holiday theme, just simply go to theme and choose a festive. Festive will kind of speak for every different holiday, um, you know, the col col holidays in any kind of culture, whether it's Halloween um, or not just holidays, but of course celebrations. You'd say, you know, Christmas, Halloween, um, you know, the whole the whole uh, list that you have, right? So here's some new templates that our design team have been rolling out. I think they're pretty, pretty awesome, pretty cool. We shall pick a template for this for this ver version. So let's choose the Santa Claus one. In fact, you know what? Um, yeah, Santa Claus one looks like the right pick for me. Let's open that template. Launch the editor. Hey, Greg from Maine, USA. We've got Jesus from Puerto Rico. And yeah, guys, during my process, if you have any questions, drop it. Um, in previous live streams, I wasn't so good at multitasking to see what's going on in the comment section, but I've organized things in a better way so I can kind of multitask, see if there's any questions coming through and try to uh, reply to them as they come in. For some reason, the editor tool is taking a bit longer than I expected. Let me, I might have to refresh. I'm running a live stream at the same time, so that could be a potential issue. Hmm. We'll try that again. Just gonna refresh quickly. There we go. Cool, okay, so here's my template. I'm gonna go ahead and first things first, I'm gonna upload my content, go to the uploads, and I'll go ahead and pick my product images. So let's start with these ones here. Now you can drag and drop anywhere on the canvas now, which is pretty cool. You don't necessarily have to drop in this section. Uh, we thought this is just a lot easier for people, for people's workflow. And of course it it is super easy, right? Doing it that way. Um, okay, let me just see where the images have gone. Um, 
don't see them here. I think they had gone to the bottom. Just refresh again. Sorry, guys. I don't know why uploads didn't go in right away. That's embarrassing. My mic just fell on me. <laughs> okay, there we go. So there's the image I've added. Um, Right, okay, so there's my two images, cool. So first things first, I don't necessarily need them on the canvas right now. I'll go ahead and replace it with the open version and get it over there. And then I'll go ahead and use the background removal tool. There we go. And from here, we want to clear up the details as I usually do. Right over here. Now this one is a tricky one because there's reflective surfaces. And it is very, very tricky to work with reflective. The best way to do it, now, there is some cool tools that we have included inside the background removal tool, and we'll get to that in a second. First things first, I just want to make sure I clean this up nice and proper. So I'm going to go into like a one pixel mode and just add some pixels over there and over here. So you can use your scroller on your mouse pad to simply zoom in and zoom out. I think that's the best workflow I find rather than always using the uh, hand tool. The hand tool, of course, is really useful. Now, for reflective surface, we can give this a try. I haven't tried it before um, on a surface like this, but we can try and see what happens. Basically, I'm going to put it all around here. And there you can see it's starting to make it look a bit more transparent. So, And so the idea here is not to complete, completely make it transparent, just enough so it gives this kind of reflective feeling, right? And that part, we're good. And then I need to do it just a little bit over here. Now, I can't say for sure if this is going to be the most optimum way of doing this part. And the only way I'm going to know is by doing one thing. We're doing one thing and one thing alone. That is to add a background color, right? So let's try add a background color and see what it looks like. So you can see... Some of this stuff looks OK, but it's going to need a bit of finessing. So I'm going to go here and choose more yellow over here. There we go. We're starting to get something. The reason I'm using yellow, the yellow is actually primarily used for hair removal. But I don't want it to be super transparent. You know, I want it to just be a little bit transparent. But it's not doing exactly what I expected it to do. I think overall it's OK, but you know, I think it might be better off without it. Let's just see how it looks here. Because I have to do a lot of finessing. And no one likes to finesse too much, right? You don't want to. The, the whole idea of this background removal tool is to do things quicker. But when you're working with reflective objects, it's never easy. It's never easy at all. Um, doesn't matter what software you use, actually. Yeah, see, the, still the gray is just not working on me. All right, well, it's worth trying. What we can do is I'm going to rub all this yellow stuff out. And I'm simply going to do one thing, which is ah, I rubbed out a bit of red on the side. Let me go get there again. I'm simply going to use the um, the red markers. I think that should do the trick well enough. OK, the only downside is that it's going to look a little bit um, too transparent. But I think it's the best we can do. There is one other 
there's one other solution to this, and I'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so it's a bit more advanced, um, something that I would typically do on Photoshop and stuff like that. But we can definitely, most definitely do it here as well. So let's first get rid of these reflective areas. I mean, even we most likely end up using white background here, right? And But we don't want to be forced to do that. We want complete freedom with these products. So if you were to use a blue background or whatever background color you want, you need that absolute freedom, right? Who would agree with that? Um, so restrictions is the mother of all evil. <laughs> I don't know if that uh, if, uh, that has been said before. Okay, um, cool. Okay, so now you've got to clean. Now, I, we know what the problem is. Like I said, it's too transparent being these reflective parts, but I'm going to go with it. First things first, I'm going to make sure I don't make it as a blue background because it will just export as blue. I'm going to make it transparent and I'm going to add it to my canvas. Now, the solution, like I said before, is very simple. All you got to do is duplicate this, align it back right in with this image, then replace it with the same image. But this time, we got to do, again, another background removal. But you know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to basically chop out everything minus the glass part. All righty. Okay, so we got a nice, decent crop here. Um, you can tell the machine learning is is doing its thing, where it's done the, most of the work for me. There we go. That'll do the trick. Done. Right, let's see what is happening on Facebook. Cool. So there we go. We've got this one now. So what I'm going to do now is simply reduce the transparency. So we've got this kind of effect, as you can see. Uh, and I'm going to send it. To, um, in fact, I want this layer, the transparent layer, with the glass effect. I want that in the, in the back. And this needs to be way at the front. So we're aligning the glass layer at the back. You know what I mean? So, and the best way to get your perfect alignment is simply go to the layers panel, choose image. Where's my other image gone? Image, go to align, center and align that, center and align this. There we go. We've got a perfect alignment now. And what I want to do is take both of these and group them. Now we know they're never going to get get away from me. <laughs> so perfect. So that was a little bit of a process, but it was worth it in the end because look, got this little nice little transparent layer there. Hope that was valuable for you guys. Just knowing that little technique there, if you want to work with transparent layers, try use the hair tool. If the hair tool doesn't work, do two different layers, one with the transparent part completely cropped out one without it cropped out, then layer them together, put the the one with the glass layer at the back and make it about semi-transparency. Uh, you gotta have to experiment what how, level of transparency you want. Some good news is that in the future, we're gonna be adding blending options. <clears throat> blending option simply means that it creates a filter on your image and makes it blend with the background, you know, and you have various blending options that you can use, which is pretty cool. Now, with that said, there is a bit of an issue here. What's that shadow doing there? Okay, so let me just try and get rid of that, please. Okay, so I think that shadow is, um, there we go, from here. I'm going to switch off the shadows from both layers. Switch out ground shadow there. And there we go, group them. There we have it. Cool. All righty. So now with that done, I want to continue working on this image. So I want the I want the resting point of this to be a bit higher. You want the focus of the product to be uh, mid center, somewhere where you know it has some level of hierarchy. If it's too low, it's just the hierarchy is all messed up. So somewhere around here, it doesn't have to be very, very right in the middle. It just needs to be somewhat in a good position. Um, and lift this up 
lift this up. There we go. And I don't think we need Santa Claus, of course. I mean, this is... Indian um, South Eastern. Make sure I include all my homies from from the southeast. I'm from Sri Lanka, by the way, originally. Um, so you know, this is very a south eastern south eastern type of um, cutlery or containers. Uh, spice containers set container set. A little bit of a mouthful, but that's okay. So if you select, uh, if you highlight the text, if your text, if you're inside the text, the line height won't work because um, you need to actually be selecting the entire box. Um, so there we go. And from here, I'm going to use. We recently introduced scaling from corners of the text, which makes it much easier to scale your text accurately. Now with that, I think we've got our text, ho, 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 southeast, eastern. Now the colors are a bit off. And what I would do in this case, I wouldn't use branded. I mean, you can try and we can give that a go. Let's let's just try that um, because there isn't a scenario where you don't, you know, where we, where you can, where, where you know, branded is not relevant. Um, it's just that, you know, I know what colors I need to use for here, but let's give branded a go just for the sake of having a bit of fun. So some of these colors in the pop section is very, um, and you find with the, you find this with the southeastern style design is that it's very colorful. Now we got kind of even balanced it because you know, we got to think about that it needs to be a holiday themed and not too southeast south, south, southeastern, right? And so that's the challenge here. So the moment you go down this route, you can see that okay, maybe it's starting to look more indian like but at the same time it's removing the entire look and feel of the holiday season you know so we don't want to necessarily do that entirely um there might be a midpoint that we can find that's a safe region so let's just keep experimenting see what we've got here for the different colors yeah i mean so many cool options here that I could try out, but I think all of them are a little bit too colorful for my liking. So I'm going to go down the pastel route and see if we've got something a bit more toned down. You know, kitchen products and stuff like this need to be toned down. They they don't they shouldn't be like over the top colorful. Um, this is looking a bit nicer. Let's see if we can go down a bit more cooler colors, cooler tones. Okay, so the, here's some cool options. I've tried a bunch of them. I'm gonna try something a bit more custom and work on this myself, the, rather than using the color palettes this time. So I'm gonna click background color and I wanna try going with a very night sky and see if this might look good instead. Um, This guy is not working so much. Go back bright. And then from here, I think keeping it minimalistic is the best bet you'll have with an image like this. Um, filters overlay. This is an image, it seems. Okay, for some reason, this has been recognized as an icon, so I've got to delete that. Let's use one of these, duplicate. Okay, so this is a shape. Yeah, I think without the Christmas trees, it looks better. And then here, you can kind of work on this 
And luckily we did this transparency thing because now the text is look the 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 glass area is looking a lot better. I want this to be a bit more prominent, so I'm going to go full white. And I want this to be a little bit more Southeast Asian. Or just actually just make it pop a bit more. Let's try and see if we can add some of these redder. This, there's some very Christmassy type colors here, like the red and the green. So let's see if we can choose some of these in here. Southeast, east, east. And then scale this down. And use something that is a bit toned down. This is kind of your Southeastern Spice painter set. We've got to stay consistent in the color. I think the blue needs to be the one. And okay, so there's a little bug there. Um, good thing I spotted that. So I'm going to just go on back and do that. Retainer set. Blue. And oh. Wait. There we go. And I want to make this orange. Cool. Okay, so we got our colors in there. I think that looks how it's supposed to. Um, I mean, it could look, you can, you can go back into blue and, and make it a bit more toned down, but I think I'm pretty happy with that. It's, it's got some kind of resemblance to the product itself. And so here's your little holiday image. Now, where would you use this, use this image? Social media? Yes. On Instagram? Yes. On your website as a main product image? Maybe not, but in a funnel page, perhaps yes. You know, especially if you're doing a Christmas deal, then this can go nicely in your funnel page, you know, along with the other products. Now, I want to go check out some of the other images that was given with this product. If we have some other images that we could try out, but I want to go into the bundle. We've got a Christmas entire a holiday theme bundle, in fact. So you can go ahead and try that out. Um, in Hero Image, just go and choose the bundle image. That'll open up um, the Santa Claus mug theme that we have. And you can do like a call out or lifestyle. Let's give a lifestyle image a, a go. And yeah, add to new image. Sorry, guys, I think we just got a bit stuck there for a second. Let me see if I can refresh. Cool. Okay, so let me go back into this. I'm going to delete this image, go back to my mug, hero image, open the bundle, add to new page. Some reason it's not adding to a new page. Let me just try add. Strange, it's the first time I've had this issue. Um, I'm gonna try one other way of doing this. I'm gonna just refresh one more time and see if I can add it to just open a new page first. So I'll go here, uh, delete that one, new page, and then simply add to current. Yeah, there seems to be something wrong with this template. Um, some reason it doesn't seem to load fast enough. I'm not sure why. Um, it's going to take a...
Okay, I'm going to try pick another template because it seems to me that template might have some kind of corruption on it. So I'm going to go ahead and see if there's um, another template we can pick. Um, okay, there's a lifestyle one here. Let's give that one a go. All right, what I'm going to do is save this project and I'm going to open another project. Okay, there's my project that's did. I'm going to go to this one and open, open the bundle. There's a lifestyle shot. There we go. Okay, so from here, it's again, just repeating the same process. What, what, what I would do in this case is I would actually open a new page and create my own lifestyle shot first. And so this is a cool technique to use where you know you open up your product into a new, a new page. Um, There we go. And then basically start creating a scene around that. So what I would go and do is use the photo creator. I think Moose is the best for these kind of compositions that you want to create. So go into your backgrounds and choose a cool background. Let's see what we can find. I think something like this turquoise -y style looks pretty cool. Or I want something very homely. So let's find something homely. Um, Home. Okay, a lot of cool little objects here that we could use. In fact, I'll add some of these here. There we go. Here's an object. Just want to create a nice little scene around this product. living room. Yep, something like a bit cozy like this. A nice little fireplace in the background. So once you've got your background image, right click, send, add as background, delete, and then we got to create a table for this to land on. First things first, I need to make sure that this background is blurred out. So go to image adjustments, hide the layers panel, um, increase the blur and let's go back to photo creator and choose the table this time. Okay. There's lots of little kitchen looking tables here. Let's find something. I want like a dining table, to be honest. Um, How you spell dining? I'm not sure. Let's see what we get here. Um, yeah, I think we can just use this one. Let's give that a go. So here's my table. Scale that up. Um, you know, the angle is just too, too low that it's not going to work. I've got to find something a bit more angled out. Um, let's try using. In fact, let's, let's go for something wooden. Hmm. Yeah, but a lot of these ones are too tiled. This one will work. There you go. Um, so it's got a nice little ash wooden look. Send that one to back. 
And now we've got to create a nice little shadow effect. Now, the thing is, the problem with this, of course, is that this, remember the whole scenario, we had to crop out stuff and do that whole thing, you know? So in fact, what I'll do, so just, just for the sake of this image, I'll replace it with the uh, closed out lids one. I know the, the open out ones look better, but um, uh, I think this is also an important scenario where you want to show the product closed as well. So let's go ahead and do that. The crop wasn't as good this time because there's a lot of details. So when you do have a product with lots of details, you do have to go in and finesse it a bit more. Oops, everything just disappeared. Let's try and go okay let's try see where the why everything is pretty okay because i need to use green there we go there it's all back and zoom in cover all the details and remember the technique i said guys when it comes to background removal if you want to make sure that your crop looks perfect and pristine just go to background color and add a background and see where do you need to finesse so here's a bit of finessing that i need to do so i'm going to go on the left here, on the right, sorry, and finesse this part here. There we go. And that will pretty much do the trick. I mean, I could do a little bit more, but I think it's pretty much ready. Um, don't forget to make the background transparent. The amount of times I've done that and ruined my my work on the background removal is, is, is you know, I've lost count. So there we go. So this one looks nice and clean. It doesn't require too many layers. Let's send this one, one layer front, layer up. And then what we can do is start giving these things shadows. So we'll add a shadow here. Um, scale the vertical, scale on the vertical, horizontal distance. And you know what? I want to see if I can crop this. I think not. Let's just keep it as it is. And shadow, increase the blur all the way and reduce the opacity. Same thing for here. Ground shadow. And let's do, there we go. I think we've got to go a bit minus. So minus 500, increase the scale all the way. Minus 600, let's try that. There we go, that's better. And increase the blur. There we go, we've got a nice shadow now. Um, pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with that. I think the scene's looking pretty realistic, which is cool. Um, you can see, you know, whatever image you do when you're using this this uh, feature that we've included. Um, I think, I mean, this pot in proportions will be much bigger, right? So it'll be around that big. We can kind of tuck it away to the sides. Always make your product your product of center of tension versus any extra ornaments on the side. You can have other ornaments and other kind of decoratives, but don't make them the focus. Don't ever make them the focus. Um, so this looks pretty balanced. I would just add a little tinge of blur on this one, just to make it feel like it's pushed a little bit further to the back. There you go. Just that little bit of, of focus. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the reason I created this image is so that I can actually download it and try it on this other template. You know, Obviously, it works great as an image by itself, but in your marketing content, perhaps you want to add more graphics, uh, more information. So hence, you got these lifestyle images where you can do that. Simply go find your image, drop, Um, there we go. So the image is inside. Okay. So there's a problem, of course, um, as you can see, it's too bright. Okay. So for that, what we need to do is go into the adjustments because the, a lot of these images are already set in terms of brightness and stuff like that. So you have to go and redesign those bits. And this circle actually is too big of a circle. I think what we need to do.
One second. Let me just delete this image first. Done. Delete. Yeah, so I wanted to use a different circle because it's, um, for this image, it's kind of making it too, um, too small. So add this one and I think if I just do it directly, it should work. Of course, we got to delete that. Okay, for some reason, okay, I'm gonna have to refresh for the upload to show up. There we go, there's my uploads. And reposition. Yeah, I mean, I would scale a tiny bit. Move it a bit to the horizontal axis, a bit on the vertical. There we go. So, and to show a little bit of that plant, remove the border thickness. And obviously, I want to mimic that first image that we had before. Um, I think I had the project somewhere here. Let me see if I can add to new pages. There we go. So, there's my old project that I added. Um, so, this blue here is a good blue that I want to use. pick that shape and just in fact just do a copy paste over here but a blue here so it's basically shape blue and the rest of this background needs to go white okay so using a gradient i'm going to go fully white on this Yeah, so I'm going to delete these Christmas trees there. And okay, so there's a bunch of these. Actually, let me go into my branded, I think, not branded, but um, color palettes. And I think I was using one of these color palettes before. It was one of these. Let me try. It was definitely pastel. Yeah, it was one of these ones actually. Is it this one? Hmm. Yeah, I think it was this one. And go back. Yeah, what I would do is put this a few steps back. Actually, I want all of this to be on the front. Center front. It's cool to have these kind of snowflakes, this kind of interacting with the object. So here, this one coming slightly on top of it. This one slightly off. There we go. Something like that would kind of work. In fact, I would even remove this piece because I don't think it's really serving much. You can you can have it on and you can have this little text in the middle, but I think the central alignment is looking a lot better. Um, if you want an extra color, no problem. You can just add that. And slightly miss, slightly off aligned as well. Um, Okay, so there's your two images. Now it's 4.55. I think I got to spend a little bit of time kind of sorting out my issues on my end uh, to get these images done. Now let me see what we've got on the chat. Um, so guys, yeah, if you've got any questions, anything that you want me to talk about specifically, just drop it in the messages inside the Facebook Live. I'm all ears and I'm all ears and eyes. Okay. 
Okay, lots of questions from here. I can see. Okay, a lot of technical questions. You got any te technical issues? You just need to uh, message in support or check out our FAQ pages if you're not sure how certain, certain features work. Um, there's plenty of training stuff on the FAQ on YouTube that you can go check out. Okay, with that said, I'm going to see if I've got time to do this last image um, and this one. So here's my final design. I'm going to save this as um, what we call it, South Eastern Set. And let's move into another project. This time I'm going to start with an HD banner and let's see if I need a template. If I find the right template, I'm using, I'm, I'm going to create a quick image in the next, hopefully I'm going to challenge myself if I can do it in five minutes. Um, hopefully I'm lucky enough to do it in five minutes. So this image, like I said before, is not an easy image to do a product um, design for because the photography is just clearly not taken well, right? So with that said, how can I still manage and, and create something that has some form of impact? Well, it's not, it's not easy, but we can try. Um, and the way I would try is firstly, first and foremost, picking an, picking an image with a container because that photograph needs to be inside a container. It's not going to work without a container. So here's a perfect one for that. Um, there's a container in here. It's, of, of course, a different niche, but it, I mean, selecting a template comes in so many different forms, either the layout, either it's the niche, either it's the theme. Uh, sometimes it's the colors, it really doesn't matter, but we've made it very easy to find the right template for you through all these different options of, of searching. Now, I'm going to use this template because I think it's got the perfect container. Um, it's got a very kind of mood book kind of um, mood board type of look and feel. When I say mood board, as in the design itself, you'll see in a moment once the template opens. Um, the design itself is inside well, it's kind of like pasted on a wall kind of thing. You've got these kind of tape pieces on, on, these, side, on, the, on these ends. Uh, what I'm going to do is first and foremost is replace it with my own product image. Um, first, I got to actually let me minimize and Boom. Okay, let me just replace it. There we go. Um, I refreshed a bit too fast. So guys, the dev team has been working a lot of, um, you know, server issues. So hence there might be a bit of uh, work that's still being ongoing in the back end. Um, so that could be slight delays on that part. So let me see if I can, there we go. So there's my image. Now I've added the image that I've, you know, I have to I have no choice, but to work with this is coffee. So I'm going to go in remove the background because there's so much stuff going on in the back that is just not going to work in our favor. Now, removing the background is not going to be easy for an image like this, I don't think, because it's so dark and um, there we go. So here, I'm going to have to do that. And then the algorithm's confused as what, to, what I want to crop. So I have to draw some bits manually. There we go. And of course, around here as well. Did 
There we go. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to do some other color adjustments. So I'm going to go to colors tab in the background removal. And I'm going to click white balance to see if that improves the color. So I'm going to choose this as white, pure white. I'm assuming this is pure white. So there you can see it's removed that kind of yellow tinge that we had before. And then I'm going to use cast color cast removal, which is a great feature. If I can choose it. There we go. And as you can see, color cast removed all that kind of beige stuff going on the on the sides. Um, now there could be a problem here because I'm wondering if, yeah, I'm guessing this text is supposed to be gray. So anyway, so there we go. There we have it. That kind of really, really improved the image. As you can see, it's like, you know, it's 10 times better, but of course not perfect, but we can still work with that. So I'm going to add that into my container. There we have it. I'm going to scale this up a little. And I'm going to click done. I'm going to go to my reposition. And I want to reposition this a bit higher. So it's in view. There we go. I don't want to show the bottom because the bottom doesn't look too good. Yeah, around there. So it looks like you can see a bunch of coffee boxes. It kind of looks cool. And now, obviously, I have to reposition now these tape elements. Put that one there. This one over here. And these are kind of decoratives. They look kind of cool. They look a bit hipster almost. So I want to stick to using that. And of course, you're going to have to customize your typography. But uh, with this object, obviously, I can use this. But I've got plenty of things that I can use. And I'll go to Photo Creator and go into Objects and choose Coffee. Let's see what we get for coffee. I want to get coffee beans, actually. There we go. But I don't want necessarily, well, I suppose we can have the um, the mug. I just, I was actually hoping I can just find coffee beans by itself. Let's see what options we get here. Yeah, maybe something like this. Let's see what this looks like. I mean, I was hoping this was going to be transparent, this image, but it's not. Um, let's delete this. Let's let's find an entire uh, coffee beans image. I, I'm going to go to Pexels because Pexels has does have some pretty cool images on on uh, on their website. There we go. So some pretty cool ones here. What can we use as a background? I'm just looking for something very coffee beany like. There we go. Something like this was more like what I was looking for. Send this to back. There's so many ways you can obviously do this. You don't have to use a very full on bean image, coffee bean image. Um, there's different things you can opt for, but in the case of this scenario, I want to just try this one out. You know, um, I want to remove the border of this image. I don't think this, this border is looking good. So let's pick the, Shape settings and make the border radius actually zero border radius, but thickness is all. Maybe just a little bit. I think the effect that we're trying to do is like get that photo frame effect. There you go. But you don't need so it doesn't need to be so thick. There we have it. Okay, so that looks cool. And then the text we want to change to a different color. Okay, something's going on here. There's a border on this text, and this text has got very complex texture. So if you add a border to it, it's just not going to look good. Um, this is, remember, this is an HD banner, so the size of it is going to be much bigger. You're going to have to zoom like way in, like around this much. So just remember what it's going to look like for context before you finalize the design.
Um, I want to pick a blue. So we pick something a bit more oriented and you can just change this. I mean, the good thing about this font, it looks very holiday themed. So we can say this Christmas. And all we got to do is take that and make it a bit more bluer. Yeah. There we go. Cool. All right. So let's make one of these blue. What that looks like. So that's what you need to do when you're working with, you know, an average quality image where you have no choice. Uh, you're trying to work around, you're trying to figure out some workarounds. And the best way to do it is, you know, by finding a container, adding it into a container, cropping, uh, you know, finessing the image as much as possible to the best of your ability. And then finally, you know, taking that and just, um, uh, you know, uh, giving it a relevant background, a relevant design style around that image, and then you're good to go. You know, so it's really it really comes down to those uh, those factors. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. It does have a Christmassy feel, which is cool, which is what we're trying to aim for. Um, it really comes to these kind of festive kind of fonts. This was originally a Black Friday banner, but just with a bit of context, it kind of looked like a holiday theme. You can then, you know, add more things to it. Of course, you can add snowflakes. You can add, um, you know, specific colors that are more holiday theme like. But I think already, just with just for context and some of these elements, they they bring this holiday vibe. With that, guys, I'm going to see if there's any other questions on the stream, and if there's not, we're going to be concluding. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys, for being here. Stay glorious. Um, you know, look, I'm really looking forward to the new year as we've got tons of updates coming on. We're working on mock-ups as we speak, which is really, really exciting. I can't wait till we launch mock-ups. Uh, I think the most current advancement that we've been having is trying to have global deployment. We're really working a lot of server optimization so that people in every part of the world can experience Glorify at the, you know, the full speed and full effect. Um, so that is an ongoing task that will be happening till you know sort of the uh, beginning of new year you'll start to see on a global level lots of improvement uh, there's been so many people saying uh, it, people um giving us feedback in the community saying that the speed has just gone through the roof very recently just because of the few optimizations we've done and we're going to continue to roll out these type of optimizations that we go as we go along uh, with that of course there's always minor fixes that we're working on and then on top of that, you know, we'll be rolling out the, t the bigger features, like I said, mockups, um, and then the share ecosystem, which is something I'm really excited about. You can share uh, design files with one click, with one, uh, you know, with a link, with via email, and you know, to stakeholders, to guests. Um, we'll be opening the guest feature really soon. The guest feature is really awesome because you'll be able to basically um, design with. Uh, so let me just turn off my screen share. Uh, des design with, um, you know, guest people without having to add them as a team member on a single design. They'll have limitations, of course, because, you know, guests don't get the same privileges as a team member. But just having that option as well available is, just, is great, you know, just so that you can get other people involved in the design process. We want people to get into the design process as much as possible, whether they're, doesn't matter what, discipline they come from or what part of department of your team they come from whether it's you know mr paid ads to social media to your you know your design team of course and of course you as um you know maybe someone someone who's an entrepreneur or perhaps the head of head of the company we want to you know designing designing is becoming more and more collaborative and it's important that it becomes collaborative because the end goal is always much much better i and that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this session. If you have any further questions, drop it up in the community group. And I will catch up with you soon. Take care.